As I was writing this book, I thought it would be fitting to include a chapter about my daily life. So without further ado, here is a day in the life of Tyler Oakley. Each morning with the dawn, I rouse myself from my abysmal slumber. Thereupon, I sit up, fumble around for my glasses, risking the interference of my hand balancing up the balance of the many of his schools on my desk. The day proceeds as such. I eat a lot, including a salacious breakfast, which is usually the complex richness and succulence of oatmeal, a wonderful concoction when served on a plastic platter. While doing all this, my tactile thumb scrolls through my phone, allowing me to see the pertinent tweets as well as the cockamamie tweets of plebeians telling me they ordered the masterpiece of literature you hear now and see before you, entitled Binge. As the sun makes its diurnal course across the sky, my day becomes hectic, with promotional film to upload, members of the bourgeoisie bombarding me with requests for a direct message or to be person of the week. The few outliers urge me to relax and prompt me to appreciate the community I have. It is at moments like this I am reminded why I splice my life together through YouTube in the first place. To communicate across the hinterlands encompassing a wide breadth of people. It makes me beam to see the stereotype of a homosexual juxtaposed with the authenticity of my videos and the audacity of my fans to declare that people can live their own unprecedented lives no matter who they are. What? Do you not understand what I'm saying? Look it up. This is a story that you definitely never heard before. It's brand new. I totally haven't told this story in every single interview I've ever had. It's so original. When I told you that you were going to get exclusive content, stories I had never told in videos in my book, this is one of the stories I'm talking about. I walk into the president's office and he's giving us a tour. I look around and everyone's just asking him questions. He starts to look around at us, and I start to look around in his office as well. I see a map on the wall, and a couple of other stuff on this table, and then I notice his desk. A black, big, wooden desk, just there, staring at me. I don't know what to do. I turn around to him, and he looks me dead in the eyes. Of course in that moment, I thought I had to compliment something of his. His shoes? No, that's too obvious. His pants? Too creepy. His suit? I don't think so. And then I turn around and say, cute desk. That's definitely an exclusive story you've never heard before. Thank you for listening. <laughs> As you all may know, I have a sexual attraction to men. But just last year, I tested my sexuality and fell in love with a woman. We found love in a hopeless place. I was at Hooters in England with all of my Brits. I looked over at Zoe Suggs sitting across from me. She had a mouthful of fried pickles and ranch dripping down her chin. Right then, I wanted Zoe Suggs to be mine. So I reached my leg up and I rested it on her knee. She asked me with pickles flying out of her mouth and landing on the table in front of me. What the f I wanted to marry her right then and there. That night I professed my love to her. She broke up with Elfie the next day. We began to date. It wasn't even a month into the relationship when I realized I hated vaginas and I did not know how to work them. I was not being sexually pleased. So I got on Grindr and had a bad one night stand with a gay porn star. So I found out about it and we broke up. Still to this day, it's hard to see Zoe's tweets and not cry. But it's even harder to see the porn gifs on Tumblr of the bad one night stand. Make sure you pre-order binge at tylerookleybook.com. Okay, bye. I love you!